What's up guys? Man, it's been a hot minute since we worked on this Pontiac Vibe. It's probably been about a half a second for you, but it's been about four months for me. So I kind of have to refresh myself what's going on. Let's check this thing out again. So I have to primer it again. I have to block this with 180 right here with the long board and primer it again because it's still pretty coarse because as you can see when I did the body work, I loaded quite a bit of Bondo in there because this quarter on this car was pretty wasted. So I'm going to block this with 180 and then reprimer it and then hopefully block it with 400 and then paint it and I will have a all black car again. I'm excited, I can't wait. back in primer again this is the next day primer came out nice and nice and smooth all the black on there is just a guide coat kind of helps you know where your body lines are when you start to block and all that 
So basically I am going to do the exact same thing that you just seen me do. I'm going to block this. The only difference is instead of 180 I'm going to use 400. And then we will be ready for paint. This came out really nice for what it was. This thing was smashed. Definitely needed a new quarter. But I saved it. Good enough for now. For a 2009 Pontiac Vibe. It looks pretty darn good. There we go. A couple hours later and we are ready for paint. Finally. It's only been about five months finally man I can't believe it what a process <laughs> I think it came out really good though I can't wait to see it pretty thorough with the body lines and everything but it is all sanded all tacked off I have some just regular generic black in the spray gun right now mixed thick because what I do is I will spray this on and then I will I'll put a couple heavy coats, kind of almost like a primer, and then I'll go over it with like 800 grit sandpaper or 1200, just wipe it off, and then any of the, you know, the fine marks you might see in it, that should usually take care of that to try to get a nice job. And then finally, I have the actual color for it, so I think we will be in good shape. So I am going to put a little bit of etch primer on the bare metal spots and finish taping these spots here are really hard to tape off on these cars i mean the right thing to do would be to pull the glass but we're not getting into all that crap i'm gonna tape it off the best i can and it'll come out nice nobody will know and just got to do a couple little tape spots and we will be painting this thing first couple coats of just regular black metallic on there that I had laying around kind of act as a primer still got a couple little scratches here and there that's kind of how it goes when you when you get a big job like this where there's a lot of filler in it you just have to keep on working it out little by little going finer and finer with it well, I got some old 320 here I'm gonna just kind of go over these spots Kind of try to sand some more of the scratches out. There, now I got 1200 that I'm going over it with now and that'll kind of even out the 320 scratches even more and just make it that much nicer blow it off again we got a brand new paper towel with some nice clean water on it we'll wash it off with you do not want to use any kind of chemical on it at this point no wax and grease remover or anything like that. You can use window cleaner, just a regular window cleaner if you want. 
but I would recommend just regular water. Technically you can use a tack cloth on this, but you're going to ruin a nice tack cloth getting all this dust on it that you just got from all the sanding we just did with the 1200. So it works just as good just getting a nice brand new uncontaminated paper towel and just getting all that dust off of it. Just wiping it off nice. Inspect every square inch of it if you want a nice job. And take a dry paper towel and clean the water off. Just like you were using prep all on it, wax and grease remover. It's hard to see on camera, but it looks like we got all the scratches out. And that's the key to getting a nice paint job. You start from rough, like we started this with 36 scratches, then 80, then 180, then 320, then scuff pad, then 800, then 1200. And you just kind of keep working it till all the scratches are out. Because if you got some sand scratches in here, it will show, especially on black paint or any dark color, the clear isn't just going to bury it. It will show. You'll see it. You'll clear it, you might not see it, and then you'll pull it out in the sunlight and it'll hit it just right and it'll look like crap. So this is a very important step to make sure all the blemishes are out of it. All right, now it's time for our first coat of actual paint code matching color. In this video, I'm not going to show how to mix any of the chemicals, clear paint, primer, any of that simply because all paints and chemicals and clears and primers and all that have different ratios depending on the manufacturer. So all I can tell you there is go by the directions that is on whatever material you buy for your project. In the same spot and we are ready for clear coat color seems to match really nice add all the scratches out of it so She's nice and hard at this point, so I'll take the cat cloth over it one more time and see how it turns out. I'm gonna blend it right here, so basically the clear will stop right here. I'll put two coats of clear on, and on the last coat of clear, I'll put a little bit of reducer in the gun, and then I'll just kinda spray this area very light, and then that usually blends the clear, the fresh clear into the old clear pretty good, and then you buff that out and most of the time you'll never even notice.
All right, who's ready to see me reveal this thing? I don't know, let's find out how it came out. Oh yeah, came out like glass. Oh, so nice. Look at how crisp those body lines are. Nice, crisp, sharp body lines. I like that. Takes a lot of work to get body lines nice and straight. This thing came out absolutely beautiful. So if you're paying attention, you'll know that I blended right in this area, right here. Right there is about where the clear stops, and the paint stops about there, the clear stops about there. If you were watching, I don't really film painting much because I don't want my camera to get ruined. I don't have a case for it. But basically, I took the gun and kind of swooshed it out like that. Gave it a blend. And then the blend area right here just took some reducer. They also make special blender for that, but reducer works just as good and just kind of dusted it over the area. That kind of helps the old clear and the new clear kind of melt and bond together. But actually all I'll do is hit that with the buffer a little bit and that that you'll never notice anything this came out so nice so now it's my favorite part this never gets old when you have a new paint job and you get to untape it and <laughs> see how good it looks or see how bad the color doesn't match with the other paint but I'm not really concerned about that if I was that concerned, the right thing to do would have been to blend into this door, blend the paint into here, and then clear this whole door. But honestly, I'm really not that concerned with this car. I'm probably going to get the doors wrapped anyway with, with my business logo at some point. So it's really not that important. It looks like the color is a little bit off, but... This is, this paint here is almost a year old. This is fresh paint. And this has been buffed and this has not. So of course it's going to look different, but honestly the color, I think it's gonna be fine. In the spring I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna buff this whole car again. But it's kind of pointless to buff it now because it's still winter time and it's just gonna get scratched up anyway. So it'll probably match pretty good at that point. So let's get this thing untaped because I can't wait to see what it looks like. It's been overnight now and I mean it's it's hard, you know. I mean it's it's good enough to do basically anything with at this point. One more thing I wanted to add actually. So literally like 5 minutes after I clear this, you can wait up to like 10 minutes, I'd say. I took all my back tape off that I had, and then the tape that I had that was around this edge right here really tight, I took that off because you want to take that off when the clear is still semi-wet. You don't want to wait overnight for it to dry and then take the tape off right where it meets up with the clear. Same thing up here around these moldings up here. <clears throat> then I had the door jam back tape too right on this edge. I removed all that back taping I had it here, down there, because once the clear and the tape dry together, you go to take it off the next day and you end up with a, like a saw blade of an edge, I call it. Or if you take it off when it's still wet, you just have to be really careful not to touch the tape into the paint. So you kind of got to use your own discretion, I guess. But, yeah, it, you know, but when you take the tape off, when it's still wet, it kind of flows together and, and molds together and you don't end up with a hard tape edge. So it's hard to see down in there, but that came out really smooth inside that gap there up under here. You don't even, you'd never even know.
shut the door now and see how it looks. This car is really dusty, so that in the video that's going to throw the color off. This thing definitely needs to be washed at some point. But the bodywork looks pretty good. For what it was, this thing was really smashed. Of course, that was about four months ago. So you guys will be more familiar with how bad it was than me. But I do remember this thing was very smashed. So the fact that I got it this straight without having to put a new quarter on it says something about my bodywork skills, I guess. Now I can put this inner plastic back in. I had to wait for this inner plastic because you have to pull all this inner plastic right here. You have to pull all that out just to get the tail light out. Ridiculous. That's one trait about GM stuff I don't like is that simple things have to turn into a big nightmare. Like just to change a bulb, you have to pull all this plastic out because there's no access panel. There's an access panel like this, but that don't go to the tail light. That goes to, well, there's some electronics on that side, but you can see where the access panel would be there and the bolts are way up in here for the light. So just stupid, you know, just to change the light bulb, you got to pull the whole panel off. And that is not an easy job. You have to pull the floor out and pull this down. It's, it's, it's a pain in the ass. So I'm definitely going to make sure that the lights work. If I was smart, I'd put a new light in there, new bulbs in there before I put the panel on, but because that's actually a junkyard light. But, you know, new lights could blow just as fast as an old one, so if it ain't broke, don't fix it, you know? But I am really happy with the way this came out. So nice. Yeah, the old paint is definitely duller. Once a buffer goes over this, you'll never notice. It'll look really nice. Time to put the antenna back on. Super happy with it. 